Hello and happy Straturday, friends. Cyber here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide. Uh, before I get started today, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. Alright, uh, let's get down to business. No sing-song way to do it this time. Today we are going to take a deep dive into how to play the Milkmaid. Uh, this Milkmaid came out uh, really recently, uh, and it's being updated frequently. Uh, I don't for sure know her canon name, but the um, collector's head trinket that comes with her is Amethyst. So I believe her canon name is Amethyst. Let's do the credits real quick here. Uh, Retael did the concept, the gameplay design, the sound effects, the scripting. Uh, Turk MC did the art. 54NBB did the animation, and Mooncanon did additional art. So, don't mind these gold numbers here. I had to trinket her a bit. Um, but, let's just start by diving into her base stats here. Um, her HP starts at 20, and it will be a 36 at max resolve. This is, um, this is below average. This is the same growth uh, to a Grave Robber and a Shield Breaker. But she doesn't really need to be um, tanky, potent with the HP. We'll get into a little bit of why that is when we talk about her kit. Um, but she's kind of going to fill a different role than needs to have HP. Um, her dodge is 5, ends at 25 at max resolve. Um, that is what I consider average, right around um, a baseline of five or even the shield breaker having somewhere around seven and a half, I think. That whole area I consider average. So she's got average dodge. She's gonna avoid attacks a considerable amount of time, but she's not, you can't count on it. So um, bring some either tanky or dodgy people with you and you should be fine. This is the same dodge as Crusader and Man at Arms for comparison. Uh, by default, her prot is a zero like everybody else. I have a trinket adding to hers, so that's fun. Her speed is a five at opening resolve, and it will progress to a six at second level, and a seven finally at fourth level, and stay there for the fifth. Um, this is a good speed stat. This is uh, the same as the Highwayman or a Houndmaster. So she's going to get some outspeeds pretty often. Um, a low roll may make several of her other party members act first, but with this kind of a character, that doesn't really matter as much. You're not putting a mark on anybody as your primary um, focus, and you're not like um, defending anyone else or getting a heal off real quick. It's not going to kill anything, so... Her accuracy mod is zero, like uh, everybody else, pretty much, so that's not really a problem. Uh, her crit is a 2% at opening resolve, and it will progress all the way to a 6% at max resolve. Um, this is below average, but not painfully so. It's the same crit as a uh, Man at Arms or a Flagellant have. So she's completely capable of critting with decent frequency, but. You're not going to be attacking all the time with her, so it's not super imperative. And her damage um, is kind of low. It starts 3 to 6, and at max level it'll be 5 to 11. Um, now I say it's low, but it's a little misleading. This is the same um, damage growth as a Flagellant has, and she's kind of similar in the way that all her attacks have either a... Um, damage over time that they can put on the target or um, they will mark the target as well and she'll put out considerable damage with each of those functions so you'll find she's able to contribute offensively as well so let's really get into her um, her combat skills the first is cosmic trident and it is usable from the first second or third rank and it can target the first or second rank of the opposing team. It is a melee attack with accuracy base 90, it does full damage, and has a crit modifier of 2%. This will cause bleed with a pretty good potency actually, um, 110 base 
percentage is about 10% higher than normal at each level. Um, and it starts with a two points per round over three rounds. At max resolve, I believe this is a four points a round. Um, so it's a fairly potent bleed, especially for putting a decent amount of damage on them as well. And it will do a bonus 20% damage versus husks. Her second ability is Celestial Javelin. Uh, it is usable from the second, third, or fourth rank, and you can target the third or fourth rank on the opposing side. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90, does full damage, and has a crit modifier of 2%. Um, it also has a very potent blight, uh, with about 10% more potency than a normal skill of this level. Um, and at baseline, it does two points of blight per round for three rounds, which, and at max, similar to the last move, it'll do four blight at max level. Both of these have that 20% damage versus husks, so she's actually really useful in the farmstead, which is tied to her backstory. Uh, for more on that, you should visit her workshop page, and the link is down below. Her third ability is Comet's Kindness. Um, you can heal a target with this. You select a target, any of your allies, including herself, um, and they will heal 1 to 3 HP at this first resolve, and they will have a restore, uh, restoration heal of 4 points per round for the next round. So you'll heal half of that now, and then you'll heal when they take their next turn. So this is kind of uh, the best of both worlds. Uh, restoration can save lives uh, if you got a dot and they're close to death store or just got off of death door this saves lives um, so it's a very good heal in that regard the fourth ability is dust breath and it is usable from the third or fourth rank and it targets both the first and second rank of your own party uh, they will both heal two to three HP and you will buff those targets, plus 5% prot. Um, at max resolve, this goes up to a plus 10% prot. Uh, so this is not a bad way if you are um, continually taking damage on that front line. If you have, let's say, a force guard or two, and she's not really taking damage, or the back line in general is not taking any damage, uh, this is a good way to mitigate how much damage you're taking. You can continually use this to heal what they have taken and reinforce them for three rounds um, against the future damage, which is pretty awesome. Her fifth ability is Dust Down Wind. It is usable when she is in the first or second rank, and it targets both the third and fourth rank of your own party. You can heal them for two to three, similar to the last move, and buff their dodge five. Um, at max, it'll also get up to 10 dodge. This is also uniquely a good way to protect the back ranks um, so that they don't take that incoming damage. Maybe I'm just misreading it, but uh, it, it has a lot of utility, but I think I would use this in general when, to, to bail them out more than to reinforce them, if that makes sense. The sixth ability is Glimmering Butterfly. It is usable from any rank, and you can target any rank of your allies. It's usable three times a battle. Um, I don't know offhand if that increases. Looks like it might stay that way. Um, but it's usable three times per battle, and it heals at opening level, uh, one HP. It clears stun, clears marked target with an 80% chance, and it is a free action. This little cannot crit heal is very important to keep in mind. You're not going to get a crit heal on this move itself. Um, but I believe at max level, this is going to heal about 3 HP. And it doesn't seem that potent, but I use this a ton. Because it's the free action heal. You're literally just going to pop this and you still get your turn. So if somebody is just a little bit hurt and somebody's really hurt, you can just pop this on the minimally injured ally and then hit them with Comet's Kindness on the, the really hurt one, or hit this and still hit somebody with an attack. So it's a, it's a kind of unique thing that not a lot of other classes have. I don't think, I can't think of a class offhand that has a 
free action heal aside from transformation um, abilities might have a heal attached like the abomination her final combat skill is crystallizing talon it is usable from rank one or two and you can target any enemy rank with it it's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 90 it has a damage modifier of negative 10 percent and a crit mod of negative four percent and what it does is it marks the target and this is the only attack she has that does not do 100 percent damage and even then it does 90 percent damage so she's going to be incredibly potent um, as far as percentage of her uh, true damage that she's going to be dealing whenever she attacks. So let's dive into her camping skills real quick. Um, she's got the normal Encourage, Wound Care, and Pep Talk, um, as most classes do. And then she has four unique skills. Uh, the first of the unique skills is Farmhand's Song. It's a time cost four ability that will give buffs to your party. Um, you, they will all gain two speed and 15% max HP for the next four battles. This is a good way to make sure um, your party has the edge in survivability for the foreseeable future. If you are, you know, in that last leg of a dungeon and you just want to make sure your guys don't get um, absolutely demolished in round one, this might be a good way to do that. That speed bonus is probably the most important part of this, but that max HP buff is actually really handy. Her second unique ability is Dust into the Flames. It is a time cost two. It affects the party, and they will get 15% damage bonus for the next four battles. They will ignore stealth for the next four battles, and all her companions will be, uh, let's see, they will receive 10% stress, which is so they'll be a little stressed out immediately, and they will take more stress damage over the next four battles and have less of a virtue chance. So this is kind of a, um, it's a risky proposition, which is why it's such a short, uh, such a low, excuse me, time cost. Um, but it also kind of makes everyone potent, and stealth can be a, a big problem in medium level dungeons or, or hard dungeons or even in the farmstead. Uh, so this might be a good way around that if you feel like your party can manage through the, uh, the stress and the virtue chance for the next four battles. Her third unique camping skill is Humble Apology. It is also only a time cost 2 ability and all companions will heal for 10 stress. Um, this is just a really sweet move, honestly. <laughs> it's a really sweet camping skill. Um, I don't think I would ever not use this at a camp. This is a good way to keep all of her allies um, sane, so to speak. If you ha if you find yourself using Dust into the Flames, the best follow-up move is Humble Apology. Like, it, I can't think of another way to use four, four points that would be better than that. Her final camping skill is Hardened Resolve. It is a time cost 3 ability, and it affects herself. She will take 15% less stress if afflicted for the next 8 battles. She will recover 15 stress, and she will heal herself 20% of her HP. Um, this is a pretty good way to fortify her for the future. Um, not a lot of camping skills have a 8 battle timer on them. Um, the fact that it's attached to her being afflicted is not necessarily that bad, so um, it's it's going to be just as useful. But I also think just the fact that this is a time cost three, healing her HP and her stress, it's it's probably pretty good. If you if you come down to the end of the camping run and you have nothing else to use, this isn't a bad way to go about it. So. Let's talk about her a little bit here. Um, she's got some unique traits. I have not taken this one out in a dungeon, um, but this one has. Uh, when you use any ability on her first um, combat, she will unlock Husk Body, and Husk Body makes her immune to diseases. She is not affected by food and not affected by virtue chance modifiers. Um, 
So she has her own virtue stuff, so this is not a big deal. Um, being not affected by food, what exactly does that entail? Um, she is not going to um, eat during food checks. She's not going to heal during hunger checks. She is not going to um, heal from food at all. So if you're in between battles and she hits death's door from like a blight or a bleed, you, you can't really rectify that until you get back into combat. Um, or use a camping skill on her. That's another way out of this. So you need to be a little more careful taking her out into a, into a dungeon, but overall, um, she's not taking your food shares, and um, yeah, if you have to starve because you didn't bring enough, she at least is not going to be affected by that. So... I don't know. There's a lot of pros and cons on either side of the fence there, but it's just a unique way of making her feel and act different than the rest. So let's talk a little bit about those custom virtue and afflictions. Um, she's got four options when she um, has a virtue check. Um, the first of which is luminous. It's her virtuous, um, I guess I'll call it affliction. It's her virtuous state. Let's call it that. Uh, she hits that about 33% of the time, um, and the other three options are all afflictions, and they share the rest of that chance, roughly being about 22% apiece. There are lots of details on all of these virtues and afflictions. Uh, luckily, they're all included on that workshop page. There's a link you can click in there if you are curious about them in detail. Um, I believe the luminous one the virtue uh will add dodge and speed and act out about 50 percent of the time um reflected is one of her afflictions i believe that one has about a 50 percent uh act out but they're not they're not happy <laughs> and diffused is another one of her afflictions and refracted is the other affliction I don't think I can go really in depth on any of those here, but luckily uh, the creators made the link in the workshop page. Now, what kind of quirks would I lock on her? Uh, primarily, I tend to use her as a healer. Um, at, you know, because she has so many different ways to do it, and any niche way of healing or even buffing for these two abilities. Um, that you could possibly want to do, she can pull off. Um, so I, I consider her a healer first, and even if you don't, I think it would probably be best to keep Glimmering Butterfly to free action heal and still, like, maybe you want to just have an offensive build. It's not my cup of tea, but it's functional. Um, so what would I probably put on her? Well, I'd probably like to put... Um, any ability that adds to her healing, frankly. Um, and depending on where you like to line her up, she has either a melee or ranged option. So if you really want to make sure she actually does get some crits considerably, like say you use her in the front and she uses melee all the time, you might want to lock Precise Striker like I have almost locked over here. Um, but personally, I think it's more a matter of just making her survivable. Uh, so Photomania actually wouldn't be a bad one to lock if you're going out in high torch runs. Um, probably wouldn't be that bad of a deal. And aside from that, uh, just boosting her dodge, survivability, maybe scouting chance. That could probably help too. But we are going to dive into... I have a lot of her trinkets. I don't have all of them, but I have um, a good chunk of them. We're going to spend some time on them here. One of her crystalline trinkets here, it is the Bottomless Pale. On an attack hit, it's going to refresh limited use skills with a 10% chance likelihood. So that um, that Glimmering Butterfly move, um, it might refresh your uses of that just by attacking and hitting the target. So this is a good way to um, keep those uses in Endless Run. So if you're going to use her in Endless, this might not be a bad option. And also on attack hit, it's going to buff self plus one HP heal amount with a 25% chance. So you're going to get this buff 
uh, semi-frequently that's going to add straight up 1 HP healed to all of her skills. Um, and if you're just thinking about that, I, I believe most of her regular healing skills, like the normal ones, are going to, at the top end, heal about 7 HP at max level. So, adding 1 each time, she's going to get real potent real quick. This one, I don't actually know what it does. I thought about looking into the uh, the coding to see, but, you know, I think it has to do with the uh, a certain boss in the Endless Run that I'm not going to mention, but uh, I think that's what that does. The Regenerating Tomato is a Melvade-only trinket. It's going to nerf your speed, minus 6 speed, but in return it's going to add that 1 HP heal amount to all your abilities and 15% to the restoration mount you apply to things. Um, so it's going to make you potent, uh, more potent in all your healing abilities, but it's also going to double its potency growth for Comet's Kindness because it applies the heal and the restoration heal. So if you plan on mainlighting that healing and that is her primary function, this is a pretty good trinket to put on her. She's got the two uncommon trinkets. Um, one is a 15% damage with ranged skills and a plus 5 dodge. This is for if she likes to chill in the back of the party and use her blight move. And it synergizes pretty well with that plus 5 dodge with, um, oh, well I guess with that actually, but uh, the whole concept of having prot in the front of your party and dodge in the back. Uh, I mean, she fits right into it here. It's weird. Um, but the other one is very similar. It's going to add 15% damage with her melee skills, and she will have plus 5 prot on herself. Um, I'm using that one uh, when I go out on a run here in a minute, because I'm going to use her in rank 1 or 2, and I don't think she's going to fall out of those ranks. Here she has a common trinket. just adds 15% to her max HP. This is... Uh, sorely needed if you think you need sh if you think your party needs her to have HP um, it's not a thing that I consider her in dire need of so I'm probably not gonna equip it that often but early game why not and the other common she has here is the oozing potato and it adds 15% to blight and bleed skill chance so Oh, I better probably equip those, huh? Uh, let's see, what am I gonna... What am I gonna bring? You wanna bring that, attacks, and that. Why did you not actually... What? What is happening? Why not? Alright, I figure let's take her out into a dungeon. I'll show you uh, three or four fights. How they go. And it is what it is. It must be a free day. I didn't even pay attention to that. Corruption has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Let us burn out this evil. Let us indeed burn out this evil. I'll grab that later. But because of the shape of this dungeon, I'll probably grab that on camera. But I'll grab it later. Oh, are you kidding me? I came here for nothing? Yikes. Yikes. The darkness holds much worse. You can loot Milkmaid. I want to show off your cool sprites. Alright. Well, that dead end was a dead end. Oh no. Are you Klepto? A handsome reward. Oh no, you're just. A task well performed. You're curious. That's fine. I suppose that's fine. But. You're not the looter. Finding the stuff is only the first test. Forgot to light now back up. Be carried home. Oh, okay. You know how I said I don't think she's gonna be in the uh, back ranks. The magic I'm glad that worked strong. out. A blazing star is born. Yikers. Well. Good news is I can force move both of them forward. Uh, that one only goes a little bit. So I'm not going to do it with her. I'm just going to... Yikes. Yikes. Hey, there's the husk body. Woohoo!
At least they can still attack with the Arbalist. Round one is pretty much a bust. Decimated. Aside from that. <laughs> you know, I was told you I was going to show you what you did. Uh, well, maybe next combat will go better than this. Here's her free action. I don't have her poison move on. Maybe I should equip it next time, just in case this shuffle happens again. Here's her incredible healing abilities. Man. Alright, let's, uh, let's hit a stun. Why not? Goodbye. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Hiya. How you doing? Okay, first of all, minus two dodges. I can work with that. Uh, you know what? We're gonna give you the spotlight. Why not? You're gonna get kills. I can feel it. Free action heal. And a kill action kill. Oh, not a kill. Oh, oops. Maybe I should have used the more powerful move. That's okay. We kind of want them to make more slimes. That'd be fun. Well. Be gone. Stabby, stabby. Such precision. Another one falls. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Well, well. Nothing, just milky bones, huh? All right, I accept. Nature herself. I accept. A victim to the spreading corruption. Malformed. I feel a battle victim. coming on. Oh, you're just gonna, you're just gonna grab that, huh? It's fine. If only treasure could staunch the flow. Aha! Uh -huh. I knew I felt a battle. Corruption. All right, battle three. Treat me well. I'm gonna highlight you. Neither of these, I think there might be a level component to when you can have the, uh, what is it called? Sideshow act pop up. And I don't think they're high enough level to get it. Heal yourself. Yay. No, we're gonna use that one. No bleed, damn. Another abomination. Not like I needed it. This returns even the boldest gaze. Well, well, well. Alright, we'll make this one the last one. Technically, the last one should have been, but, you know. Why not spend a little more time with a class I like? You know? Don't you dare. How dare you? Ooh, that's a that's a kill you can finish off. That's for sure. Let's mark you. Why? Why though? Nah. We're gonna finish off the kill. Feels good. The 
round quakes. Ooh. From full HP to one HP. Oh, you poor guy. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. All right. Free action heal, just to do it, and then finish this sucker off. Good riddance. All right. Brought low and driven into the mud. That is all I have time for today, but feel free to check out the milkmaid. She's amazing, and uh, you can find her on the Steam page. I'll include the link down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, share this guide with a friend. Um, share the joy of DD. Do it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay frosty.